Okay, now let us look at the another important part of our excretor system that is the ureter. So we studied about the structure of kidney, the functional units of kidney, they are the nephrons. So after the formation of urine, the urine that is formed here, it is collected into the long tubes called as ureters. We have a pair of ureters that are arising from the hilus region of the kidneys. Left kidney, right kidney, they have a region called as the hilus. So from this region, the ureters originate and they extend up to the urinary bladder and their length is around 30 centimeters. So in the abdominal cavity, these ure ureters, they arise at the hilus part of the kidney. They obliquely travel downwards to the urinary bladder. So whatever the urine is created in the kidneys that is collected and transported to the urinary bladder by the ureters. The movement of urine takes place uh, by movements called as peristalsis. So peristaltic movements let the urine to pass down into the urinary bladder. So here the urine is collected. Now let us look at the urinary bladder. So let us uh, look at the urinary bladder. This is a pear shaped organ that is present in the lower abdomen which holds the urine. It collects the urine. So the urinary bladder is an elastic organ which can hold up to 600 to 800 ml of urine can be collected here. So that is the capacity of the urinary bladder. The urinary bladder, it has got an outlet called as urethra. So urethra is a passage through which the urine passes out. So this urethra is 4 cm long in females, 20 cm long in males. So the length of urethra is varied in male and female. In case of female, the length of the urethra, the passes, the urethra and the genital ducts are separate. Whereas in case of males, the genital and urinary duct is same. So the urethra is passed through that common duct. So this urethra here, it is controlled by two sets of circular muscles called as sphincters. So here two sets of circular muscles are controlling, not allowing the urine to flow down. So when there is an urge for urination, then these muscles relax and let the person to urinate. So among these two muscles, one is involuntary and the second muscle is voluntary that is under the control of the brain. So the passage of urine is called as the release of these sphincter muscles to pass the urine is called as a micturition. So how this micturition takes place? So here I told that urinary bladder is controlled by two sets of sphincters, circular muscles. So the upper sphincter and the lower one. When sufficient amount of urine is collected, say for example 300 to 400 ml, the actual capacity is 800 ml of urine. But when it is filled with some 300 to 400 ml of urine, then it starts, some kind of pressure is exerted on the bladder. So because of the pressure, this sphincter is relaxed, the first set of sphincter is relaxed. That is due to a reflex action created by the nerves. So this reflex, it relaxes the first sphincter. But whereas the second sphincter, it will not allow the urine to pass down because that is under our control, the social conditions, we should have some facility to go and urinate. So for that reason, the urine is not urinated. So it gives an urge for uh, micturition. Then that is under the, our control, brain's control. Voluntarily, we can relax the sphincter muscle and pass the urine. The second set of sphincter is under the direct control of the brain. So. The total capacity of the urinary bladder is 600 to 800 ml. It can retain the urine up to that quantity. So when uh, these uh, sphincter muscles are relaxed, then the urine is passed out. So in a day, a man can excrete around 1.6 to 1.8 liter, 1.6 to 1.8 liter of urine per day. 
So this is an estimated amount of urine release uh, produced, excreted. But the quantity may be increased in cases like when large amount of fluids are taken or fruit juices are taken. Sometimes the quantity may be less when less amount of water is taken or during dehydrated conditions. In such conditions, the quantity of the urine is varied. Now let us look at the composition of the urine. Urine, mostly it contains water. And it has also got some specific color because of a pigment which is excreted in the urine. A pigment called urochrome, which gives the straw color, light yellow color to the urine, is added. So this pigment from where it is derived, this pigment is derived by the breakdown of RBC. So our red blood cells, they have some specific lifespan, like 120 days. So after the life is completed, the RBC are broken down in our body, in the liver and spleen. So when they are broken down, their metabolites, the broken parts, hemoglobin, these are all converted to some other substances. Among those substances, one of the substances is urochrome, which is excreted in the urine, which gives the specific color to the urine. And urine contains water. And urine also contains nitrogenous substance. The most important nitrogenous substance present in the urine is urea creatinine, creatinine and uh, uric acid. Urea is mostly commonly found. The amount of urea in the urine is varied, depends upon the diet we take. The cases like when we take high amounts of protein, protein rich diet. So the proteins are converted to amino acids, they are again converted to some other nitrogenous compounds to produce energy in our cells. So during this metabolism, nitrogenous waste like urea and ammonia are produced. So, heavy intake of a protein rich food leads to excess amount of urea in the urine. So, the composition of the urine is varied, depends upon the diet. Generally, there won't be any uh, amount of glucose in the urine, normal conditions. But some cases, if you take excess amount of glucose or excess amount of sugars in your diet, there may be trace amounts of urine found, uh, sugar found in your urine. So, in conditions like diabetes, the uh, urine is tested for the presence of sugar. In sugar patients, the glucose is found in their urine. By testing the urine whether sugar glucose is present or not, they will find out whether the patient is diabetic or not. So, glucose is also found in certain cases. So, these are the, the composition is varied depends upon the diet. Now, let us see what are the other things and what is the percentage of other minerals, other salts present in urine. Now, if we look at the percentages of different components of urine, water 96% and organic compounds of urine like urea, uric acid, creatinine, water soluble vitamins, hormones and oxalates. These are the organic compounds, they constitute 2.5% of the urine and 1.5%, remaining 1.5% it is inorganic salts like calcium, iodine, chloride, sodium, potassium, magnesium. So these kinds of uh, ionic salts, inorganic salts are found in urine. So this is the composition of the urine. The composition of the urine helps the doctors to diagnose so many metabolic disorders in the body. Any kind of problems, metabolic disorders, kidney problems or uh, uh, any uh, of the uh, diseased conditions are observed understood by studying the biochemistry of the urine. Biochemistry in the sense the chemical composition of the urine. So there are some specific levels for urea, uric acid, creatinine in a normal healthy person. If their levels are varied or increased, it will give a sign that there is some system which is not uh, functioning properly, malfunctioning. It indicates that the disorders in our body. 